Hi, again. Okay, this is the movie wrap-up, the first one. Um, for September. And the yeah, whole, oh, hope I can do this in two videos. <laughs> I did watch a lot, forgive me, but... Okay, the first one I watched is Haunter. It has Abigail, Abigail Breslin in it. Uh, it says, Trapped by an Evil from Her Past. I love this movie. I just got it because it was an Abigail Breslin movie and I like her movies. So, this was made in 2013. Uh, uh, Abigail Breslin stars in Haunter, a unique take on the traditional haunted house story from director Vin. Cinzo Natali. In 1986, teenager Lisa and her family died in their home under sinister circumstances. Unable to move on, their spirits continued to roam the house during the intervening years. Now over a period of six days, Lisa must reach out from beyond the grave to help her living counterpart, Olivia, avoid the same fate as that Lisa and her family suffered long ago. Uniquely unsettling and shocking, Haunter is a one-of-a-kind reverse ghost story that chilling that, that oh, sorry that chills long after the final frame. It has special features, commentary, uh, two different commentaries, uh, behind the scenes, Haunter the complete storyboards by Vincenzo Natale in a trailer. If, again, if you hear noises in the background, just I'm watching a really, movie. I didn't want to. I don't have a VCR remote, so. Um, then I watched <clears throat> Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. I wish I had every one of the posters these are based on. I love them. Cause supposedly that's what they're really in my set. Um, is that they're based on like the original poster art. This was made, I hope it was 1991, I think. At least that's what it says. Uh, just when you thought it was safe to go to sleep, Freddy Krueger is back to haunt your dreams and freeze your blood. Lisa Zane is a child psychologist, tormented by reoccurring nightmares, but not until she meets a new patient with the same horrific dreams does her, her, does her quest for answers lead to a certain house on Elm Street, where an evil that defies the grave is about to be unleashed upon the world. With Yapet I don't know if I'm saying the name right. Yapet Koda, Kodo, and cameos by Rosanna. Rosanne? I think Rosanna. Tom Arnold, Alice Cooper, and Johnny Depp. This chapter in the world's most terrifying dream saga is a fantastic voyage. I think the only thing that this has is uh, God, cast and crew bios. If I'm not mistaken. Then I watched Fly Away Home. No, it has nothing in front. I can't read that. This was made in 1992. Uh, the soaring adventure of a 13-year-old girl and her estranged father who learns what family is all about when they adopt an orphan flock of geese and teach them to fly. I'm looking at the special feature right now. I'm trying to tell you what to tell you. Commentary. HBO special leading the flock. Something about a music score. I'm assuming the music behind the who wrote the music behind it. Uh, exclusive featurette. Operation Migration. Birds of a Feather. Documentary. The Ultra Geese. The extra trailers. Filmographies. And that's it. Now wait, it says production notes. That's about it. Then, Romeo must die. Uh, the word on the street is Romeo must die. I love this movie. I wish Aaliyah didn't die, honestly. That makes me sad, yeah. Lisa, Aaliyah died. Uh, I just wish she, she could have lived. I would have loved to have seen her act and seen more. Seen what she would have been like today and all that. Okay, this was made in 2000, I think. 
That's weird. A thousand. Yeah, okay, maybe that sounds almost about right, maybe. I said two thousand. Um, they've got the weapons, they've got the posses, and they got no chance against former Hong Kong cop Han C. Gravity warping, martial arts, cool visual effects, and an all-star music track combine in this ribbed up action movie from producer Joe Silver and starring Jet Li in his first English language lead role. I hope they think the TV is too loud. Oh no. Is it skipping? Okay, no. Um, I hope the TV ain't too loud. In his first language, English language lead role, Lee, Lee plays rough and ready Han, who shares an attraction with Trish O'Day. Even though their families uh, are rivals in a fierce Oakland turf battle, the two also share plenty of danger as they try to find the real cause of the blood feud. No gun, no posse, no problem. With Jet Li going to war only as only he can, Romy must die as a living people. Special features, 13 behind the scenes documentaries, 3 music videos, interactive menus, filmographies, 2 theatrical trailers, and it says something about a DVD ROM oh, for your PC. Stuff for your PC. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, then I watched Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I watched this a lot of times this month because of Patricia, my niece. She loves Willy Wonka, and now she likes this one too. The old one and the new one. In a way, new one, I guess you can say. I wonder if they're going to make another one. But this was made in 2005. I should make sure it didn't say anything on the front. Um, what wanders away you in Willy Wonka's factory? Explore fields of soft minty sugar grass in the chocolate room. Sail along the chocolate river in a pink sugar boat. Experiment with everlasting gobstock. Stoppers in the inventing room, observe talented squirrels in the nut room, and travel to the television room by glass elevator. You'll find a lot of that's funny and a little that's mysterious and an adventure as sweet and satisfying as a Wonka Whipple Scrum Tiacious Fudge Mellow Delight Bar. This dazzling, dazzling film adapted from Road Doll's classic children's novel. Directed by Tim Burton and starring Johnny Depp and Freddie Highmore is your golden ticket to a world so inventive, so imaginative, you won't want to miss a delicious moment. Becoming Oompa Loompa, how they turned one man into a hundred of Oompa Loompas. Oompa Loompa Dance and the extra trailer is the only special one. I actually really like this. I actually like it mostly because it mentions what happens to the kids afterwards. Because I didn't know what happened to them afterwards. In this one, they did. Then I watched. I also love this movie. Return to Me. This was made in. I'm trying to find it. Sorry. I was trying to think for a second. 2000. Um, there's anything in front, right? Okay. Who knew that when he ordered the special, he'd get the dish of his life? David Duchovny, a mini driver, ignite sparks in this heart, warm-hearted winner about a widower and a waitress who meet and fall in love. Featuring an incredible all-star cast, this hilarious romantic comedy delivers a lot of laughs, tears, and joy that will make your spirit soar. It took a lot of coaxing to get Bob a recently widowed architect to go on a blind date at a quirky Ital Irish Italian work eatery. Once there, he's smitten instantly, not with his date, but with the sharp witted waitress Grace. With unsolicited help from Grace's matchmaking grandfather, Bob asks her out, and as their relationship blossoms, everything seems to be going great until an unbelievable truth is revealed. 
one that could easily break both of their hearts for good. Uh, commentary, what if I love Jimmy's video, deleted scenes, deleted scenes, that's it. <laughs> then I watched, uh, I can't really tell you much about these movies, anybody who's, well, I haven't watched them anyways, um, sorry, I can't really tell much, except it's about a... Time, time car, <laughs> time machine car. Uh, that's all I can basically tell you, and it's really super funny. But I watched all three of them. Back to the Future, uh, the complete trilogy box set. Anybody who's interested, it's just it looks like this on the inside. Let's see, they, this is actually I love this box cover. Because it has like they're all on different little things. And I can't really read too much of the back, but I'll read what I can. Uh, presented by filmmaking legend Steven Spielberg, directed by Oscar winner Robert Zemeckis, and starring Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd, the phenomenal popular Back to the Future films literally changed the future of the adventure movie genre. Now this unprecedented Back to the Future DVD trilogy immerse immerses you in all the breathtaking action, groundbreaking comedy, and sheer movie-making magic of one of the most brilliantly inventive, wildly entertain entertaining motion picture triumphs in Hollywood history. I loved these. I loved Part 3, although I like Part 1 and 2 better. I don't know why. I just I do. But... Um, Actually, I like part one a lot better, but part two is really good too. Um, I like part one, but I, I don't know. I heard stories about why they got a different girl. Can anybody tell me why they got a different girl for part two and three to play Marty's girlfriend? Anybody who knows, can somebody tell me? Um, but special features, and it says there's ten hours of special features on this. There is no way you can borrow on that money. Uh, Michael J. Fox, Michael J. Fox discusses his experience well, making Back to the Future trilogy, hilarious outtakes, bloopers and stuff, uh, deleted scenes, commentaries, live Q and A session, hoverboard test, digitally remastered, making the trilogy, animated anecdotes, music video. Uh, evolution of the special effects, behind the scenes segments, and production archives, and much more. I love this. And most of these, I don't even know when these were made. What was these, 80s, 90s, something like that? I have, my, my tummy on the disc, I don't know, give me a minute. This is 2002. Oh, yeah, sure. 2002. I'm sorry, I know this had it been made in the 90s. Maybe. If I had my VHSs, I could tell you, but I gave them to my sister when I got this. Can I tell you when that's made? I, I got, I mean, I watched. Uh, I watched The Canterville Ghost. My sister, Valerie, she doesn't really like Neff Campbell. It's, I don't know, she really doesn't like her in Scream. The whole the whole picture of Scream, how she acts. I don't know, I don't remember if she's ever watched her in this. But anyways, I watched uh, Canterville Ghost. This was made in, oh please, 2004. Huh, wait. It can't be made in 2004. You know, it all of a sudden occurred to me. Um, Screen, if I'm not mistaken, was made 1990 something. She's much younger in this. No way could this be made in 2004. It says 2004. Holly Dowd was made in 2004. Cut. I don't know. I don't know now. It says 2004, but I don't know if that's when it was really made. Patrick Stewart stars as the otherworldly host in an American family. Give me a minute. In an American family, yeah. Patrick Stewart stars as the otherworldly host to an American family 
in this contemporary adaption of Oscar Wilde's Charming, Charming and Witty Tale to Canterville Ghost. When Professor Hiram Otis gets a research grant to study in England, his family is thrilled to learn that they will live in a real castle called Canterville Hall. Not all of them are excited. Uh, Virginia. Mm -hmm. The castle's most notable feature turns out to be the ghost of Sir Simon de Canterville, who died 400 years ago, visible only to Virginia Otis, 16, and her two younger brothers. Though he goes through, through the motions of being terrifying, Sir Simon turns out to be a rather friendly fellow once proper introductions have been made. He gives Virginia helpful advice on her blossoming romance with Francis, a young neighbor, and even agrees to perform Hamlet, playing the role of the ghost, of course. Eventually, Sir Simon confides his situation to Virginia. He is doomed to haunt the castle forever unless a golden girl can be convinced to travel to the other world and plead his case before the angel of death. Virginia feeling that after 400 years, there is no time to be wasted. Immediately agrees, and the two disappear into the fireplace. Will the angel of death grant Sir Simon's wish, or will Virginia be forever trapped in the other world? I really like this. I got this, and I heard that there was others about this one, but I know one of them is supposedly like a musical or something. I don't really like musicals. I was even looking for the musical, but... Uh, I got this one because I, I knew them too. So, that's the reason I only picked that one. I watched all of these. Let me see, there's four on this. Um, yes, if you want to know. I like Michael J. Fox, but I like his earlier stuff. He's cute in these. I can't help it. Um, I hope I can tell you when each one of these was made. Any minute. This was put in there wrong. No, it wasn't actually, but I'll fix it later. Yep, I can tell you when each one of these is made. Good. Uh. Okay, you can't really see them, but. Secret of My Success, For Love or Money, The Hard Way, and Greedy. The ones that I liked the most on this. I liked Greedy, don't get me wrong. But I like The Secret of My Success, Love or Money, and The Hard Way a lot better than Greedy. I like Greedy, just not so much. I don't like the old guy that plays in it. The way he... His character acts. That's my problem. Anyways, The Secret of My Success. It's one hilarious step after another when a mailroom worker finds a new way up the corporate ladder in this crazy comedy of romantic mergers and mistaken identities. The hard way, a pampered star teams up with a tough detective in order to change his image, but he finds out that, that much more is at stake when they track a killer for love or money. In this sparkling romantic comedy, a hotel concierge falls for the mis mistress of a shady investor and must choose between his lifelong dream and the love of his life. Michael J. Fox stars with Kirk Douglas and, the, and Nancy Travis. In this wickedly funny comedy of heirs about a backstabbing family desperate to get their piece of a massive inheritance. Um. Give me a minute. The Secret of My Success was made in 1987. The Hard Way, 1991. Uh, For Love or Money, 1993. Greedy, 1994. I really like that, though. Very good. Then I watched... The Lost Boys, The Thirst. This one's my favorite out of all of them, except I like The Lost Boys, first one, too. Part two, I liked it, just, I don't know. Something about it, I guess. But I really love this one. This was made in, oh, please tell me, 2010, good. Um, the Frog Brothers are back to blood, that's what the front says. Um, as the Lost Boys and Girls of San Cazador prepare to party under the blood moon, an alpha vampire conspires to turn these unsuspecting ravers into an army of the undead. Uh, the only thing that stands between him and the annihilation of the entire human race 
is the infamous vampire fighting frog, frog Brothers. Armed with double barrel holy water balloon launchers and multi arrow crossbow, Edgar and Alan Frog join forces to kick some bloodsucker butt in this latest high energy action packed adventure in the Lost Boys franchise. Special feature Carmen Charisma Carpenter hosts the Art of Seduction Vampire Lore. That's the only thing that's on here, too. Um, I just wish I'd know what happened on this one. You know, what is the new one? I heard I was supposedly planning on making a new one. I don't know but what happened, you know, to the people it's on. You know, him and that girl, it turns out to be a wolf. And then I watched Blind Date and My Stepmother is an Alien. Why do I feel like I already did a video to this? I have, I'm not having deja vu. I hope I didn't. Okay. I think I can tell you, yeah, I can tell you both the dates on this. The perfect blind date dissolves into da disaster when Walter Davis is set up with gorgeous Nadia Gates in his sexy comedy caper. It was made in 1987, and I cannot tell you what's on this special feature. Lies, I can't tell you. Uh, My Stepmother is an Alien was made in 1988. Sexy e extraterrestrial Celeste marries astrophysicist Steve Mills as a part of a plan to save her home planet from destruction. Can I tell you about that one either? In the 90s, I can tell you about the special features, basically. Then I watched Now and Then. A summer when four friends made a promise to return any time they needed each other. That time has come. By the way, if you're wondering, yeah, anybody who hasn't watched this, uh, Demi Moore plays uh, this. These two, they play like she plays a younger version of her. Her, she plays a younger version of her. She plays a younger version of her, and she plays a younger version of her. Her. Um, all I know is that out of all of these, I don't know if anybody else died, but I know she's dead. I'm not saying some kind of cancer or something. Because I looked it up. I just wanted to see if anybody acted on anything else. I know she acted... Oh, give me a minute. She's acted in um, Law & Order SVU, I think. She's acted in a whole bunch of movies. She's acted in that TV show used to be on a long time ago. And I do not know about these two. And I know she's acted in a lot of movies, too. So... <clears throat> so... Yeah, this was made in 1996. It's all for one and one for all in this heartwarming comedy about the childhood mischief of four best friends who reunite after 20 years. Roberta, 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 yeah, Roberta, Teeny, Samantha, and Chrissy have been busy growing up, but they always remembered the promise they made to be there for each other. Now they're together again to relive the greatest summer of their lives. Um, the movie, movies you love, the pictures you want. I'm trying to figure this out here. The yeah, trailer and the filmographies. So, that's about it. That's all it shows me. Oh, it has, it's like in widescreen, full screen, you can choose what you want. That's about it on that. Um, then I watched... I want the book to this. I saw it. Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist. Every Night has a soundtrack. This was made in... 2008. After a chance encounter, Nick and Nora embark on a journey through New York's indie rock scene to find a... To, Seen on a quest to find the secret show of legendary band and wind up finding each other. Outtakes, deleted scenes, middle management music video by Bishop Allen, a Nick and Nora puppet show by Cat Dennings, film filmmaker and cast commentaries, and more. I actually like this one too. It's actually really funny. This one's really, really funny. 
The Man with Two Brains. This was made in 1983. At least that's what it says. Um, I don't know about the special features on this. Anyone who doesn't think Steve Martin is one of the funniest fellows on the planet should have his head examined. As a man with two brains, Madman Martin is just the guy to do it. Playing Dr. Michael Harfur, famed originator of a of Ziploc screw top brain surgery, the good doctor pines for his late wife, but slinky siren Dolores Benedict sashays into his life and changes all that. They, they're soon married, but the truth quickly emerges. Dolores' beauty hides a calculating heart of stone. The situation is hopeless until another brain specialist, oddball research, offers a bizarre ray of hope. Anyone with half a brain will rejoice in the sheer lunacy of this sublime, silly farce directed and co-written by frequent Martin collaborator, Carl Reiner. Can't tell you about any special features on that one. Then I watched, this is actually, out of all the children of corn, this one happens to be like one of my favorite ones out of it. I like part four and five. I like all of them basically, but four and five are my favorites out of that. And I think this is for bad at like Roman numerals and stuff, but children of the corn, the gathering, I'm not going to say the number on that, but uh, this was made in two, no way. This is 2011. That's a, that can't be true. Sorry. So that means like four years ago. Yeah, right. I'm sorry, but I think it was made later than that, but it says 2011 in the back. I could be, but it could be wrong, not me. It could be wrong. I know, it seems like later than that. It seems like, if it is 2000, that's probably far back, maybe, maybe 90s, I mean, 90s, 2000s, something like that, but not 2011, but it could be wrong, so I don't know, I wish I could have looked it up, nothing can prepare you for the onslaught of spine tingling, thrills unleashed with In Children of the Corn, or The Gathering, a chilling chapter in the wildly popular Children of the Corn series. The horror returns when the children of a small midwestern town are haunted by an unspeakable evil that lurks somewhere out behind the cornfields. A bright young medical student must solve the frightening mystery that plagues the children before a sinister stranger can claim their souls for his own. It's a pulse-pounding grace against time and terror that will leave even the most die-hard suspense fans on the edge of their seats. Starring Naomi Watts and Mark Saling. Then I watched Fried Green Tomatoes. I, I don't know. Everybody thinks that um, that um, her is her, but I don't know. I mean, it could be a possibility. I don't know though. This was made in 1981, and he actually grew up on this movie because my mom loved this movie. I, or she, had it on VHS. I said, well, I'm going to buy it for myself, and I found it on DVD. Academy Award winners Kathy Bates and Jessica Tandy star with Mary Stuart Matterson and Mary Louise Parker in this inspiring drama adapted from Fanny Flagg's best-selling novel when an unhappy housewife befriends a lady in a nursing home. She hears a remarkable tale of laughter, devotion, and a special friendship that defies all obstacles in this heartwarming film from acclaimed director John Avnet. Uh, commentary, moments of discovery, an original documentary exploring one of America's most beloved films. Take a journey with director John Avnet, extras Kathy Bates and Jessica Tandy, Mary Stuart Matterson, Mary Louise Parker, along with many others through the experience of creating this memorable film, John Avnet scenes specific notes, production photographs, poster campaign, and the extra trailers. And I watched Fifth Element. Uh, 
This was made in 1997. Uh, New York cab driver Corbin Dallas didn't mean to be a hero, but he just picked up the kind of fare that only comes along every 5,000 years. A perfect beauty, a perfect being, a perfect weapon. Now together they must save the world. Bruce Willis, Gary Oldman, and Emilia Jovovich. Star in, in acclaimed director Louis Besson's outrageous sci fi adventure and extravagantly, extravagantly tell, stylized tale of good against evil set in an unbelievable 23rd century world. Uh, special features over 120 minutes of new behind the scenes featurettes, the alien element, the digital element, the visual element, the star element, the fashion element, the diva. Plus feature length trivia track, camera costumes and set test, and much more. And I watch Batman and Robin. Out of all the Batmans, I actually like this one a little bit more because it has Batgirl on. And I like that Poison Ivy as well. This 2000. Sorry. It says 2008. I, I don't know why I'm going to say that. Um, 1997, I'm thinking. Chills and thrills. Will Gotham City be put on ice? George Clooney is Batman as the Dark Knight battles his greatest threat yet. Cold-hearted Mr. Freeze and venomous Poison Ivy. Batman has more than Gotham City to protect. The youthful eagerness of crime fighting comrades Robin and Fat Girl. Put them frequently in harm's way. New very special effects included a wild surf sky surfing sequence and Freeze's outrageous ice blasting arsenal. It's state of the art excitement from our Batman family to yours. Includes production notes and that's about it. Language and subtitles and nothing. Then I watched 28 Days Later. This was made in 2003. Held as the most frightening film since The Exorcist, acclaimed director Danny Boyle's groundbreaking take on Zombie 4 isn't just scary, it's absolutely terrifying. This has absolutely no bat coming, no thing on it. Basically, this is just about a guy traveling with. At first, it was a black woman, and um, I can't remember her name. I can't remember names too well in this. A black woman, and then another guy, and then eventually that guy, something happens to him. I'm not saying much. And now it's just him and that black girl. And then they meet up with a father and daughter. Then... It's, it's like all zombies, so they get attacked and stuff. And then something happens to the father, and now it's just them plus an army people they run into. And then some stuff happens, and I'm not going to go too much into it. This is actually really good. I heard 28 weeks later, but for some very odd reason, it does not appeal to me. I mean, I never watched it, but it's just like, I don't know. It's something, I guess with it being about, I think, the army or something, that just throws me off. But I might end up watching it eventually. I might borrow it from my sister. I know my sister's got it. Might be able to do a couple more. Um, I think I watched Adventureland. Uh, um, this was made in 2009. And I know they actually did another film together. A new film. What is that? I don't remember what it's called. But the two people in the front. Uh, Kristen Stewart and that guy. Jesse Einberg, and them two is doing a new movie together. From the director of Superbad comes Adventureland, a smart, witty comedy we can relate all relate to. When James Brennan has to cancel his dream summer vacation and make some money for grad school, the only job he can get is at Adventureland, a tacky, tacky amusement park where the games are rigged and the rides make you hurl, but it's where he meets M, and his roller coaster ride to nowhere turns into the best summer ever, filled with a carnival of colorful characters 
and set to a killer soundtrack, Adventureland is the kind of adventure we all could get more of. Uh, features, deleted scenes, just my life, making of Adventureland, feature commentary with writer, oh, sorry, just commentary. Direct, uh, that's what I'm saying right now. Picture music selection. Okay, I'm just gonna stop right now and then do another video. I hope I can just do. I think I'm thinking I can do two. See you in the next video.